Hi, this is Merrill with Tax Tutor. I wanted to talk a little bit about a, an idea, a concept that comes up quite often in business, and that is startup costs. So we're gonna jump into this and talk about what it is and how it all works. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. All right, so I've got a few numbers up here, uh, a $5,000 number and a $50,000 number. So is what happens is when you start up a business, the IRS treats that business as a startup, which means before that business is actually started, before we have a start date of that business, every cost that you incur to start up that business is considered a startup cost. And those costs are actually not deductible until you actually start operating that business, which is called the start date. These costs that are considered startup costs are all the ordinary costs that go into running a business. If you um, get a spot where you're gonna run your business out of, if you're paying lease or rent on that space, if you've hired some employees and you're starting to train them how that business is gonna run, if you're um, incurring all these other expenses, maybe you got utilities on the business or, or other things like that, those are considered startup costs. They're just your ordinary, normal, everyday operating expenses that you are incurring before your business actually starts. And so up until that start date, these costs are what is called capitalized. They're not expensed. Instead, they're held as an asset on the books of the business. And then when the business starts, that is when you can actually start either deducting them or you have to amortize them. So how does that all work? So let's say that you, you start a business, you haven't quite opened the door. So let's talk about start date. So what is the start date of the business? So the IRS has a bright line test that a start date of the business is when that business begins to make money. So if you have revenues that are coming into your business, the IRS would look at that and say, okay, chances are you've started your business. However, revenues are not the only indicator that your business is operating and running. The definition of a startup of a business is that, that that business is operating as it is intended to operate. So let's say that you start up a retail store and this is a physical retail store that's in a strip mall. So you set up your retail store, you put all your inventory, you put all that stuff in there. Let's say it's like a GameStop or you know something along those lines. It's some kind of a retail store that somebody's gonna come and buy goods. Maybe it's a boutique. Maybe you set up a boutique and you've put all of your stuff in this boutique and um, you've got all your inventory and all that sort of stuff. So everything that you've incurred in that business up until that date that you have it ready to operate is a startup cost. So a boutique would consider to be operating once the doors are open for business. That's another um, definition of a startup is that when your doors are open or when you're first ready to take on a customer or a client or you're ready to start helping them. So it doesn't have to be the date that your business starts making money. It's just the date that your business is ready to start making money. Everything, is, the groundwork has all been laid. If you're opening a boutique, your boutique is all staffed, it's got the inventory in there, your doors are now open, your business has started. Even if a customer doesn't walk into your business for three weeks, your business is still started because the doors are open, you're ready to take on a customer. But the IRS typically uses that, have you made money, as kind of like a really kind of bright line test. So let's say that you, you start up this boutique, you've got all your inventory, you've got all of that stuff in it, you've incurred all these costs and all these expenses. You know, let's say that you've incurred $20,000 to start up that boutique. And then you kind of, kind of break that down. Let's say that you have uh, maybe $15,000 in inventory, or you know, let's say, let's say you have $10,000 in inventory, and then you bought a $5,000 computer system to run everything. And then you spent $5,000 on all of your staff and rents and all that other sort of stuff. So that's your $20,000. 10,000 in inventory, $5,000 computer, $5,000 um, in, in staffing costs to get things up and running. Well, the, the tax code says that you can um, deduct $5,000 of startup costs as soon as, you know, the day that your business opens. So the day that that boutique opens and is open for business, well, they can then go back and they can deduct $5,000 in startup costs. Now, I have listed down here capital assets. Startup costs do not include capital assets. So if we look at this boutique that we've now opened, and we look at all the costs that we've had. We've had $10,000 in inventory, we had a $5,000 computer, and then we had $5,000 in operating costs that we incurred. Well, capital assets 
would be that computer that we bought would be a capital asset. So instead of that going as a startup cost, we actually put that on our balance sheet as a computer and we can start depreciating that as a fixed asset the day that we open our business. It's not considered a startup. That 10,000 that we bought in inventory, well that goes somewhere else on the balance sheet as inventory. That's not considered a startup cost. That's a capital asset that we have on sitting on our books. It's inventory. So that doesn't go in it. So all we're really left over is with is our $5,000 of our operating expenses that, that we've incurred to start this business. And the good news is that we can deduct up to $5,000 of those costs the day we open. So all 5,000 gets deducted. Our 10,000 of inventory sits in inventory until it gets sold. And our $5,000 computer starts to be depreciated the day that we open our store. And if we have bonus depreciation or 179 or something like that, then we can write off that, that computer much faster than um, over say like five year life that, that it would normally be written off over. Now we have this $50,000 number. The $50,000 number is when our startup costs, when our operating costs go over 50,000. Then we start to reduce down how much that we can deduct of this 5,000 and it goes down dollar for dollar. So if we have $51,000 of our startup costs, then we lose $1,000 of this and we can only write off $4,000 when we start our business. So by the time we get to $55,000 of total startup costs, we lose our ability to write off any startup costs and they all have to be capitalized. So we end up with this startup cost capitalized on our books. And again, this $50,000 doesn't include capital assets. So our inventory and computers and all that other stuff is not included in the $50,000 number. That's just true operating expenses that we have there. Um, but you know, and then, you know, let's say that we had $10,000 of startup costs. Um, then we would be able to write off $5,000 of it. And then the other 5,000 gets capitalized. And this is the worst part of it all. The IRS rules on startup costs says those have to be amortized over 15 years, which means we have to take 15 years to recognize that. So if we have $5,100 in startup costs, we can write off 5,000, the other 100, we're gonna write off over 15 years. We get a small write off every year for the next 15 years to write off those startup costs. So that's how startup costs work on in a business. The start date is the critical, but it's not like a, you, you can't look at every business and know exactly when it starts. That's, that's kind of the, the tricky part is figuring out that start date. And that can be subjective um, based on how that start date works. There is another piece of this that's called organizational expenses, and you can write off another 5,000 of organizational expenses, but those have to do with like setting up the entity legally. So if you hire an attorney to help set up your entity, if you hire, uh, you know, if you're getting all the legal documents and all that sort of stuff, you're, you, you got state fees to pay for setting up your entity, those are considered organizational costs and you can write off up to 5,000 of those as well. Uh, but we don't get into those as much because usually organizational expenses aren't, aren't very very, very much, uh, especially for like a small business. Usually startup costs are, are more of a factor. And so that covers everything on startup costs. If you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments below. And again, please like and subscribe.